At first sight, he comes across as just an ordinary likable dude, yeah? Let me introduce you to Ding Lei Ren, a Chinese super grandmaster who might go down in history as the next war chess champion. Let me list it for you. Three Chinese chess championship titles, a hundred game unbeaten streak, top five status in classical and blitz chess. He isn't called Carlson's kryptonite just for no reason. Today, I'll tell you the story of a Chinese kid from growing up in a major poor city in China, all the way to making it to the second place on the world rating ladder. This, my friends, is the story of Ding Leiren. Ding was simply meant to be a chess player. He was born in a city called Wenzhou in southeastern China, which has a rich chess history. It's not by chance that former women's war champion Zhu Chen started her chess career in the same place. Ding was pretty much the stereotypical Chinese kid. At the age of four years, he'd be brought to the local chess club by his parents. Ding's early success can be attributed to his first coach, Chen Lixing, who's famous in the Wenzhou Chess Association and was not coincidentally the first chess coach of Su Chen as well. And it didn't take long before Ding was making his name on the world stage. Just a teenager, he tied for first place at the U10 and U12 World Youth Championship. But Ding's breakout came only a few years later, in 2009. At only 16 years of age, he proved that he could compete with China's best players. And it all happened in one single event, the 2009 Chinese Chess Championship. The field consisted of 12 players, 10 of which were grandmasters, including 3 players that were at the very top of the field. Ni Hua, Bu Xiangzi, and Wang Hao. All three of them were near or above the 2700 rating threshold. Ding rated only 2458 at the second lowest rating of all 12 participants. Thus, a true David against Goliath scenario. And even though all the odds were stacked against him, Ding, just like David in the tale, managed to remain undefeated scoring 8.5 out of 11. Let's rewind. Ding is beating China's strongest chess players at the age of 16? Yeah, th that's correct. Having played a staggering tournament, Ding was rewarded with his third and final GM norm, making himself officially a chess grandmaster. This was the starting sign of a long journey to the very top of the world scene. During this period, Ding was also involved in international play for China. He started in the 2012 Chess Olympiads on board 3. But it was only in 2014 that the Chinese team could show off. China won gold and Ding won individual bronze for his performance on board 2. Only one year later, in 2015, Ding was already competing with the world's best. In the Tata Steel Chess Tournament, he scored 8.5 out of 13, placing shared second behind Carlsen. The same year, Ding entered the world's top 10. He proved to not only be able to compete with the world's best, but also be more than good enough to be part of the small group of absolute top players. In 2017, Ding went on to win both the Shenzhen Longgang Chess Masters and the Moscow Grand Prix, two tournaments composed of fellow Super Grand Masters. But the road to the number one was long. Ding Lei Ren would have to go on a challenging journey consisting of different stages that he would have to clear flawlessly. The World Cup and the Candidates Tournament to finally be able to challenge Carlsen, who remained the undefeatable champ since 2013. But one single mistake and he was out. First on the menu was the 128-player single elimination chess tournament, the renowned World Cup. Ding managed to pass all of the different single rounds and after taking down second-ranked Wesley So in the semi-finals, he faced Levan Aronian in the finals. 
Rose. And even though he lost the match in the rapid tie breaks against Lavalm, Ding, being the runner-up of the event, was now qualified for the Candidates Tournament, the outcome of which would determine Carlson's challenger. The Candidates Tournament was there, but Clearly, Ding was still a new player to the scene. Between these eight extremely experienced top chess players, Ding wasn't able to make things work out as he wanted and finished in fourth place, which objectively was actually quite a good result. And most notably, no player was able to win against Ding. He was the only player to go undefeated in the event, scoring only one win and 13 draws. And Ding went on to show great style. He finished in clear second place behind Magnus in the 2018 Shamkir Chess event. And in the 2018 Chess Olympiads, Ding, now the captain of his team, secured a first place for China by the demolishing his opponents and winning individual gold. In 2018, Ding entered the world's top 5 chess players and broke the 2800 rating mark. And not only this, one of Ding's crowning achievements is his peak rating in November 2018. Also, from August 2017 to November 2018, Ding held a 100 game unbeaten streak in top level chess competition. Imagine playing a 100 games against all top grandmasters with not one being able to pull off some tactical blow or well-executed positional ID to take you down. No, it didn't happen. Not once. A hundred games in a row. Yes, it seems almost superhuman. His streak remained the longest in history for one year, when Magnus broke his record, prolonging the streak with another 25 unbeaten games. The year 2019 would become the climax of Ding's chess career, and it all came down to one single event, the 2019 Senkefield Cup, which remains still this day the single one most impressive performance in Ding's career. The field featured no less than 12 top level players and Ding went undefeated with 6.5 out of 11, tying for first place with the world champion Magnus Carlsen. Then, to decide the final winner, there was this legendary blitz playoff match and Ding went on to win both games. As you can imagine, the crowd, in this case the chess world, went wild. Wild. Magnus had been undefeated in tiebreak games for 12 years and Ding put a stop to it with a clean 2 to zero. And naturally, after the event, Ding would be seen as the favorite to challenge Carlsen for the next world championship. Ding became Carlsen's so-called kryptonite because of his great score against him and, like in a good tale, possibly the only person capable of overthrowing the king. Just a couple of months later, Ding played the 2019 Chess World Cup and made it to the finals yet again. And although Rajabov won the match in the blitz tie breaks of the final round, Ding didn't have much to lose. He was already qualified for the 2020 candidates tournament anyway, because he reached the final and thus the second place in the event. Although Ding was one of the big favorites, he didn't show it on the board. He lost his first two games and soon after it got a lot worse. The pandemic was there, which equaled bad news for the course of the candidates tournament. On the 26th of March 2020, with seven rounds played, the candidates tournament had to be postponed because of obvious reasons. The COVID-19 pandemic was no longer sustainable and as a consequence, Russia's travel restrictions made it unclear whether the participants would be able to fly home and reach their families when the tournament would be over. The organizers made the only decision and stopped the tournament with seven more rounds to be played and more than a year to prepare for the second half. And Ding was left with a terrible score. He was in the last place with two and a half out of seven and thus no prospect of winning the tournament whatsoever. I mean, waiting a full year to eventually eventually take your loss is not too pleasant to say the least. The Covid times didn't go
go well for Dane. He could play some online chess, but these events were organized at Western daytime hours, and Dane would always be playing at night with sleepy eyes and a mess of daily schedule. Dane, the hero in the 2019 Sankerfield Cup, seemed to be forgotten. One year later, on the 19th of April 2021, the candidates tournament resumed, and Dane performed way better than the first half. He won the last three rounds of the tournament. He smashed Alexander Grishchuk, Kirill Alexenko, and even the tournament winner, Jan Nepomniachtchi. Ding kept his cool and made a huge comeback to finally end in the fifth spot, with an all in all mediocre score of 7 out of 14. But it was not like the pandemic was over yet, and due to China's severe COVID measures, there was no way for Ding to leave his home country and play abroad to qualify for the next candidates tournament in 2022. There was one more way, a wild card, but he wouldn't get it. Why was that? Wasn't Ding the favorite to challenge the champ being Carlson's kryptonite? Well, it wasn't so easy. The arbiters had only one card to assign to a player and multiple potential recipients who deserved a spot in the event. Let me explain. The card was already attributed to Rajabov in 2020, when he left the candidates tournament before it even started. This decision eventually turned out to be a correct one, since the tournament was postponed 7 rounds in and the decision was taken that a wild card would make up for the previous failed tournament where Rajabov couldn't compete. So initially it seemed like Ding would get no chance whatsoever to prove himself worthy of challenging the GOAT. But then, out of the blue, a miracle saved Ding and made him qualify anyway. Sergei Karyakin, the runner-up of the Chess World Cup 2021 and thus a participant in the upcoming tournament, made a tweet supporting Putin's regime and characterizing Ukraine as a fascist state and backed by Fide's rules they decided to kick Karyakin out of the tournament and replace him with Ding, being the highest rated player after Carlsen on the May 2022 world rankings. So that was it? Not exactly. There was one more problem to be solved. Ding had been unable to travel to tournaments outside China during the pandemic and was thus short of the minimum games requirement for qualification. Luckily, the Chinese Chess Association organized three different rated events at short notice to allow him to qualify. It couldn't have been more tight, but Ding was now officially qualified for the candidates tournament 2022. Things progressed similarly to his previous tournament. Ding had a very shaky first half, but managed to remain his cool in the last rounds and won in the second half against Jan Christoph Duda, Richard Rapport and Fabiano Caruana to end with a win against Hikaru Nakamura. He finished as runner-up after the winner, Jan Nepomniachtchi, and the second place turned out to be absolutely crucial. Let me explain. Usually, a second spot in the candidates would be equal to a loss, but in this rare case, the runner-up shared the real first place. Why? Well, Carlson had already clarified on previous occasions that he wouldn't necessarily be interested in playing the next World Championship match, especially if he wasn't thrilled by the challenger. Basically, he was rejecting anyone but Frugia. Preparing for a World Championship match can be boring, stressful and extremely time-consuming, and Carlson didn't feel like he needed to prove once again to be better than Jan. This caused a great deal of controversy in the chess world, with Magnus fanboys battling it out against more classic chess enthusiasts and professionals in the comment sections of different social media channels. But in the end, this was a decision that Magnus, and only Magnus, could take. So in short, the next world chess champion in 2023 might be won without the undisputed world's best, but with two players at the top of their game, loads of exciting chess is assured. Will Ding crumble or shall the world see its first Chinese world chess champion? I guess 
we'll know the answer in a year. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and subscribe to the channel, enjoy the funky music and I'll see you in the next video.